Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to uh, today's video. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to prank um, with prank kids. Some tips and tricks on how to sequence, you know, um, and all that good stuff. So have you ever wondered like what prank kid you normal? Some of you open up multiples or like have you ever wondered how to do like the poly combo? Um, all that good stuff. Well, today I'm basically going to be going over a lot of the, the technical play and like the sequencing um, with this deck just to, um, you know, help you guys in your journey as you learn prank kids. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is if you open up, let's say, multiple prank kids, like let's say you have a Lamsies and a Fanzies, right? You're probably wondering in like three blanks. You're probably wondering like which one do you like normal summon? So personally, like in this situation, I rarely ever normal summon Fanzies as my first prank kid. And the, the logic is mainly because if Fanzies gets stopped, right? If I make a Meow Meow right here, and then Fanzies get stopped, and I have an extender like Polymerization, like Pandemonium. Let's put one of these back. If I have an extender like Pandemonium, and I activate Pandemonium, I want to be able to do it the other way around because if Lamsies gets Ash and the Fanzies is back to my hand, I get to resolve Fanzies, which is a more important effect than resolving Lamsies. So small stuff like that is really important. The other stuff that's also really important to know, like tips-wise, is if you have, for example, a Lamsies and a Dropsies in the same hand, preferably you want to always normal summon the um, Dropsies first. And you're probably like, why? Well, if you know anything about the Prank Kid Poly combo, one of the most important things that you want to set up is Dropsies in the graveyard as early as possible so that you can bring it back with Rocket Ride to make a uh, Toad. So essentially, the, the quicker this card goes to the graveyard, the quicker it is for you to set up the Poly combo. So now let's talk about any one Prank Kid plus Poly. So we'll do... Water and polymerization, because, you know, I talked about how, like, normal summoning this is one of the best ones. Um, it's also, like, it, because it puts it in the graveyard. And even if this card gets stopped, it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's talk about, like, the the new combo that I think I don't see a lot of people doing, which is polymerization with any prank kid. Because a lot of people says that poly is dead when you draw it with a prank kid. Well, yes and no. If you draw poly in a prank kid and that's all you've drawn, poly's not an extender. But it does help you end on more, so you can still make something and do something with it. So I'll show you how it works. You go normal summon dropsies, make meow, activate the dropsies effect. You're gonna gain a thousand life points, and we're gonna summon fanzies after that. You always want to summon another pro tip here is you always want to summon fanzies as your second prank kid, because when you get impermed, if it it basically makes it so that if you go chain link one fanzies chain link two do 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 do. If you were to get Imperm on this, you can then send a Pandemonium off of Fanzies. If you don't get Imperm on this, then you can add the Pandemonium off the bird and then Foolish the Pranks. So that's essentially like what summoning Fanzies as a second prank in Monsters allows you to do. It lets you evaluate how your opponent's responds to the chain link with bird and Fanzies. So you can like appropriately send the right card off of Fanzies. Um, so I usually like this card second. That's why this card going... F like if you, if you start your normal summon with Fanzies... And you use the effects, and it resolves. If you if you send pranks, right? If you send prank kids pranks, which is generally what you would do if you summon it off the second time, um, and they imprim your bird, you have no access to the fusion spell, Pandemonium. So what you end up doing is, if you have to normal summon Fanzies as your only kid, when you link it off, use Fanzies to send Pandemonium first, summon any random prank kid, Generally, it wants to be water or fire. Link them off. And when you make the link 2, use the link 2 effect to add the pranks to your hand. Um, essentially. Unless you want to play around Ghost Spell, then you just add Pandemonium either way. But I generally would just, you would just do the reverse, where you add pranks instead of dumping it. And then you would get the Pandemonium back with the bird. Um, so, anyways... Now, let's go back to, like, the one prank kit combo with Polly. So, we go normal summon drops, link it off, summon meow, summon fanzies, link these two off, make do-do-do-do. Uh, we're going to go... So, you're probably wondering, Pack, like, how, how do I know which one is chain link one, which one is chain link two? Because that's something that is very important to figure out as well. So, it depends on the game state. But to give you, like, the most concise answer possible is, generally... 
if you have a, um, generally, let's say you already hard drew like pandemonium. Let's say you already hard drew pandemonium. Um, if you already have pandemonium in your hand, uh, generally what you want to do here is you want to make this chain link two and fancy's chain link one. The, the reason why is said that so that you can summon another kid. Um, you make this chain link one so you guarantee the kid goes through and then so they, they can't meister it. That's essentially what you want to do. If you make this chain link one, if you make this chain link one, you guarantee that this card resolve, which guarantees them to prank it on the field. So you cannot get meistered. Um, and generally, like, those are cards you have to be kind of careful around, especially when, like, there's no reason, there's no reason to ever, like, you don't make this chain link too, especially if your opponent has monsters on their side of the field, because, like, they can't, they can't, like, imp like, if they were going to imprim this, then might as well make this chain link too, right? If you make this chain link one, they can, and you make this chain link two, they can ash this and then imprim this so that you just are, like, completely screwed, um, because the most important thing is if you make this chain link one and this chain link two, if they Valor this, you summon another kid and then you just make a second doo 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 so that it makes a Valor useless. When you go chain link one fancies, and when you go chain link one fancies and chain link, no, sorry, if you go chain link one doo 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 and chain link two fancies, if they ash this and then Valor this, then like you're just stuck. Because this card, you can't tribute it for cost to add back two because card resolves where they activate. What I mean by this is even though doo 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 tributes for cost, it still activates on the field, and Valor follows that card to the to the, the field. But that's just something important to note. If it's game one, if it's game one, and I need access to the, my poly card, then what I would do is I would go chain link one fancies, chain link two do 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 do. Uh, I'm sorry, I would go chain link one do 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 and chain link two fancies. But more often than not, it makes sense to make this chain link two, especially if you want to play around like uh, Valor and impermanence and all that good stuff. So, anyways, so. We're going to resolve Fancies now, and we're going to resolve the bird. The bird generally is going to add me the Pandemonium, and then Fancies is going to Foolish the Pranks, and then I'm going to summon a uh, Prank Kid Lampsies here. So this is what we have so far. And then afterwards, we're going to um, use the effect of uh, Doo 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 to Tribute and add back two. So we're going to add back the Pranks, and we're going to add back the Fancies. And then keep in mind, we also have a Poly in our hand. So then from here, we're going to activate Polly, and we're going to use the Lamsies and the, and the card you added back off doo 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 to make a Rocket Ride, right? We're then going to go Chain Link 1, Lamsies, Chain Link 2, Rocket Ride. This allows us to summon the last one from our deck, which is going to be Roxies, because that's the only one we haven't used yet. And then you go Chain Link 2, Rocket Ride, just so that this card can't be Ash. Um, this card loses a 1,000 attack. The cool interaction of Rocket Ride is that... Uh, you can make this card lose a thousand attack even on your turn one, uh, because it says also. Uh, anyways, from here you're gonna activate Rocket Rise effect, and you're gonna always bring back one water, and then any prank kid. It doesn't really matter which one. Generally, I summon back the fancies here, so you're gonna bring back these two. You're then gonna link these two off into a Bow Wow Bark, and then we're gonna use the effect of Roxy to banish a random card from our hand. So I'll just pretend this. And we're going to summon another water from our deck. And then we're going to overlay them for totally awesome. So that's pretty much how it works. And then you would have a pandemonium of pranks. At uh, This is search. So what you would do is at end phase, you would shuffle back a rocket ride, a Roxy's, and a doo 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 doo. That goes back into the deck. You want to shuffle these back because you want to keep this for double ride geki and you want to keep these two to add back with Bow Box so you have access to Butler. When you negate with Toad, that's how you get the water back to your hand. Now, you might be wondering, Pack, but what if I like what if I don't negate with Toad and then what if I don't get access to a water? Well, there's actually a couple ways to do the combo to guarantee Butler without even negating with Toad. So, um, let me show you that as well. And it's it's super subtle, but what you do is you have to decide between either getting pranks or getting the fuel spell. And what I mean by this is if we were to reverse engineer the combo and just go back, I'll do it a lot quicker this time because we you guys get the general gist now. You link off dropsies. We're gonna now make meow. We'll then gain a thousand life points and we'll summon the wind. We'll then use these two to make um, the doo 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 doo. You know, chain one, chain two. We're gonna summon. Um, we're gonna resolve this first and we're gonna send the fuel spell this time. 
Um, we're then going to use the uh, Fanzies, resolving it to summon our Lamsies. We're then going to... So we have Pandemonium and we have a Poly in our hand right now because we this is the Poly combo. We're then going to use Doo 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 Effect to Tribute and add back these two back to our hand. We're then going to activate Poly to use these two to Fusion Summon. Summoning Rocket Ride. We're going to use Fire and Rocket. And then we're going to summon the Earth. Um, and then we're going to use Rocket Ride Effect to Tribute. Bring back Water. Bring back any Prank Kid. Use these two for the Bow Wow Bark. Use Roxy's to banish a random card. And then you're going to summon another Water from your deck. Overlay. Make the Toad. And then you activate Prank Kid's Place. And then you add the last Water to your hand. So what this ultimately does is that it makes it so that you still have Battle Butler. So you don't get access to Pranks. But you still have, on your opponent's turn, you would tribute this. Add back a Lamsies and the Fanzies so that you still have Butler without even negating with Toad. So that's basically, like, that's basically like the, like, kind of like the combo. Where you can either decide to get Pranks or Place. Personally, I always go for Pranks because I, most of the time I'm negating with Toad. And then adding the water off of that. Um, but if you sometimes want like to summon Butler and hold the Toad Negate, then that's something that you can do as well. Um, Alright, so that's pretty much like the one Toad combo. The other the cool thing is, if you play Dweller, you can actually do something that I don't see a lot of people do. But you, if you understand how this combo works and like you reverse engineer it, you realize that you can basically get any two level 3s, any two level 1s, or any two level 4s. On the board. What I mean by this is when you go, uh, let's say we go normal summon drops, we link it off, we make um, meow, we'll summon wind, use wind in this to make bird. You know, we'll use both those effects. So we're gonna add a pandemonium to our hand and then we're gonna foolish burial a uh, pranks. Um, and then we're gonna summon a um, Roxy's. Rockies. Um, and then we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna tribute this, add back uh, these two, activate Poly using these two, summon the rocket here, use Roxy's and rocket, and then we're gonna summon um, a fire from our deck. We're gonna tribute summon back these two. And then we're going to use um, these two to make Bow Wow Bark. And then we'll use Water Effect to summon uh, another rock. And that's how you get to make Dweller. So basically, any... Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. You're not supposed to get... You're not supposed to Foolish Pranks. You're supposed to Foolish the place. Because then what you do is you activate the place. And then you get access to the like any color you need. And then you tribute these two to add back the uh, the last two missing colors here. So if you try to go for the Dweller combo, you can't not end on uh, pranks. Uh, you have to end on the place instead. You just use drop. Yeah, you use Roxies in place of Dropsies. But then you have to make sure that you foolish the place. You have to foolish the place off of a uh, um, off of a uh, Fanzies. If you don't foolish it, then you you don't have all three colors. That's something to keep in mind. So basically, you can make any rank 3, rank 4, rank 2, or rank 1 on top of your end board when you have the poly combo. Now, that's pretty much that combo um, that I wanted to like basically cover. Um, the other thing to uh, note is like, uh, what do you do when you open a prank kid monster and instant fusion? Because I see not a lot of people do this. And I'll talk about why you have to go normal summon Lamsies. And then you activate Instant Fusion. And then I personally here summon the Weather Washer. Uh, just because, like, if I get access to, you know, I'm going to get access to Pandemonium. So I wanted people to have Rocket Ride as a backup plan. So basically, the reason why you have to go Instant Fusion and link both of these at the same time is because of this reason. If you were to go, if you have Instant Fusion and a Prank Kid. And you link this off into a link one, and you let's say you get Ash Blossomed. So your opponent activates Ash, negating the Lamsies, and you chain inst and then you activate Instant Fusion, summoning this. When you use these two to link it off, and you make the 
do 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 do, you'll literally realize that this effect will resolve, but it doesn't do anything for you. Like, it, like you'll add this, but then you'll use this effect. You'll get to put these two back. Um, but unfortunately, that doesn't really do anything. So like it does this card, if you try to use this to beat Ash, you have to do it very early. And what I mean by this is this situation here. If you go normal summon Lamsies and then activates instant fusion, you get to go uh, link both of these off, and then you get to chain block your first kid. So you get to make the do 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 here. Um, so a lot of people get really greedy on instant fusion and they try to use it to beat Ash Blossom, but they don't do it properly. And the way you do it properly is when you normal kid, you actually get instant fusion and then you link them both into this and you skip Meow. Um, so what happens here is you get to go chain link one Lamsies and then chain link two bird. What that does is it now gets you access to another prank kid so that they cannot Ash this. So it guarantees you get a prank kid and then do 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 resolves and that guarantees you a um pandemonium so now like you're in a lot better position right because now you have access to a kid and the do 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 you can then like link this off make the meow here and if they ash this spot you're still in a really good position like you're still like in a fine position to like keep playing um so that's why like i think it's like really really good it's way better if you open up fancy's instant fusion because, like, in this position, it's, like, definitely still kind of awkward. But at least that now, like, you have this. You still have, like, a play to make, um, if that makes sense. So, that's why I generally like to activate um, Instant Fusion Normal Kid. And then try to play that turn. Uh, most of the time, they'll try to, like, probably Ash Blossom like this. Because you make this Chain Link 2. And then if they do Ash Blossom this, then you can just make the Fanzies link it off. And then Foolish the card you want to add off of this. Uh, which is what I've been doing. And it's the same, it's basically the same combo when you open up a uh, Prank Kid's Pranks and a Prank Kid Monster, which is probably one of the strongest, like, turn one opening um, that you can do. Um, the last thing to note is that, like, Prank Kid's Place is a card that I think people don't utilize uh, um, to, like, their fullest potential. What I mean by this is, when you recall back to my top 32 match of the YCS, there was a situation where I had Prank Kids placed up from the turn before. Um, so I use Lamsies. Uh, I make a Meow. And I go Chain Link 1, Chain Link 2. And I, I reduce all his monsters. I summon a kid. And then I pass. Because I'm under Kaliga and I'm under Crystal Wing. So I just pass. He, he goes to his turn. He clears my board. Clears these. And he passes back to me. I normal summon another kid. And I link it off. I make another meow. And then you go chain link one Roxy's chain link two place. So you reduce his monsters again by 500. And the, the cool thing about place is that even if this card leaves the field, the reduction is permanent. Now I'll summon another kid off this. I'll link these two off into a do 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 do. And then I'm going to Foolish Burial a Pandemonium. And then I'm going to use this effect to add another prank its place. You're probably wondering, like, Pac, why would you do that? Well, you can then activate the prank its place. Search another kid. That you haven't used this turn. And then, oh yeah, Fancies would also resolve to summon. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> um, and then you would use these two again. To make another do 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 and go chain link one Lamsies, chain link two place. And you're probably wondering, like, wait, Pack, didn't you already use place this turn? Um, and the answer is yes, I did, but place is actually once per turn per copy, which means if you were to activate, you can only activate this card once per turn, like to activate it from the hand and then search, but it, its effects are not, it's once per turn per copy, which means I can actually reduce by place one more time. And then that's how I was able to beat over my opponent's Crystal Wing, which went from 3,000 to 1,500. And then I just went to Battle Phase and attacked his Crystal Wing. Main Phase 2, Tribute. I back Pandemonium. I back a kid I was missing. And then all of a sudden I have access to Butler on my opponent's turn.
So that's a really cool interaction you should keep in mind when playing place where um, it allows you to do that, um, especially like against like Dragoon, especially against like, um, especially against like, uh, you know, decks that like basically puts up a bunch of negates. Prankit's place is one of the best cards to help crack that board. Um, so I really, really think this card is like one of the best cards in the deck for sure. Um, so that's um that's a, like another like tip uh like with prank kids place that you should probably like know. Okay, there's this is like another play that sometimes comes up. Um, you lose to Bell, but you beat Ash Blossom, and I think Bell is not main deck this format, so I would, I think this play is like pretty good, but. I'll talk about what happens when you draw a monster reborn and a fanzies. Um, it's like pretty interesting, but what you do is you normal summon the fanzies, you link it off for meow, and you don't use the effect of fanzies to search. And you're probably wondering like why? Well, afterwards you can activate monster reborn, bring back the fanzies, and then you get to use both of them to make the um do do do, and then basically chain block the kid so that um you can just play through Ash Blossom. Um, so it doesn't beat Bell because uh, they just Bell the Monster Reborn. But that's something to also consider. Um, and then you can full combo from here. Oh, yeah. Okay, guys. I'll, the other thing I'll talk about is... Okay. Guys, another really good tip that I'll, I want to talk about is basically zonings. So what I mean by this is when you summon your Prank Kid monsters, they should always be in zone... Um, in the following zones. One, or two, three, four, and then five. And you're probably wondering, like, Pac, wh why does that matter? Like, when you nib your opponent, if you guys watched the YCS finals, I summoned my nib token over here. And it was actually intentional. It was on purpose. And if you want to know why, it's because this slot is the worst position for any prank kid monster because of Bow Wow Bark. Um, and Bow Wow Bark is what enables you to kill your opponent and OTK uh, when you sometimes can't. So, for example, if you were to go to Meow and you link the Meow off into a Doo 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 or a Bow Wow Bark, basically Bow Wow Bark points here, so like having a Prank Kid monster here is really good. Sometimes you have a Doo 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 and a Bow Wow Bark down here, so summoning to this one is really good. And then the opposite is also true. So basically, that's where like, that's basically why you want to have your, um, like your prank kid monsters in this kind of L shape so that Bow Bar can always point to a prank kid monster. So that's like another zoning tip. Like in terms of like, oh, does zone ash zoning actually matters? Um, another cool tip I have, chat, is this. Or another cool tip that I have for people playing this deck is, you know, it's like super minor, but I think this is what makes or breaks like you winning a game or you losing. So let's say you have a set pandemonium. You did your combo, and you have a Bawa Bark over here. Um, so this is what one Prank Kid combo generally looks like end board wise. A set Pandemonium. Um, you have a Fanzies over here. Um, and then in terms of monsters, you have a Water and a Fire. Um, water, Fire, and usually like another Doo 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 and a Meow. Something along those lines, and then everything else is just Fluff. And then you also have a Pranks on the field. So, should be over here. So, this is like a trick uh, a trick that I've been doing to like help make it so that if I were to get Twin Twister, um, you know, like I can like make it so that the Twin Twister doesn't hurt that bad. Here's what I mean. So, in standby phase, on your opponent's turn, you have the draw phase. Your opponent draws a card and then they move from draw phase to standby phase. In standby phase, your opponent has turn player priority. Like basically, your your opponent always has the turn player always has something called turn player priority at the start of every phase, which means they have the first action of any phase. The only way, um, and, and like you cannot activate anything until your opponent decides to basically um say, like if they say they have nothing and they don't want to do anything for turn their like using their turn player like privilege then it would automatically, they would basically be attempting to leave that standby phase. So what I mean by this is, you know, when I ask my opponent, do you have anything at the start of standby phase? Um, and they say no. And they're like, and I'm like, 
okay, I have nothing either. I agree to move to uh, main phase one. And it's really, really important to ask that because when you ask that, if your opponent don't, doesn't twin twister you, then we just go to main phase and our pandemonium is now live. If they twin twister you using their like turn player priority, they just hit like both of these cards, right? Then you're allowed to use Bow Wow Bark to tribute to add back your pandemonium by banishing this usually because it's going to be dead. And you get to add back your pandemonium and like another kid for follow up. But if you were to, if you were to just shotgun Bow Wow Bark and add back two kids, right? Like this, right? Let's say you shotgun Bow Wow Bark and you add back two kids and they twin twister your back row. Now you don't, ha like you just have a normal summon kid. But if they crack your board because you don't have access to Butler anymore, two kids doesn't help you crack your board back. You need a kid and a poly to help reverse crack your opponent's board. But the only way you get to add back poly is if they twin twister at first, and then you use Bow Wow Bark. So what I'm trying to ultimately get it at is at don't shotgun your Bow Wow Bark. And you might be like, yo, I'm trying to play around tactics. But to be honest, you never actually shotgun your Bow Wow Bark to play around tactics because when you activate Pandemonium, you're gonna play around. You're gonna play into tactics either way. So if 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 that's the case then that's something that you should keep in mind, right? Like basically asking your opponent, hey, are you attempting to leave the standby phase? If they say yes and we enter main phase, our pandemonium is now automatically live, right? So this is what I mean, right? So just to recap, um, confirm with your opponent if they're going to leave the standby phase. If they do, good, our pandemonium is live. If they decide not to and decide to twin twister you, then fine. Bow Wow Bark will add back these two. Um, you'll use Meow, by the way. You just keep the bot in the board because um, there's no reason to tribute for cost because you're not going to banish Meow and get value out of it for the rest of that turn. So you just add, like, the follow-up cards, right? And then now that puts us in a position to reverse crack our opponent's board with a Prank Kid monster and a Pandemonium. So that's why it's, like, really, really good to always, like, not shotgun it and just, you know, play as conservative as possible. So that's something, like, another uh, really good, like, tip um, when you're playing this deck combo i want to talk about is like this never happens but like if you open polymerization like og poly plus um you know like two kids that are not water um you get to you get to basically end on toad before the you get to end on toad before like and play around nib so what you do is you activate poly right here you use both your kids and then you'll summon the rocket ride you go chain link one chain link two chain link three um, the reason why you make this chain link three is to protect these cards and make sure they resolve. You summon drops and drops off the off the two, and then Fanzies will then foolish burial a um, pandemonium, ensuring you have access to it. Um, from here, you'll overlay these two into a totally awesome, and then you use rocket ride effect to tribute and add these two, and summon these two. Sorry, uh, you'll link these two off into a do 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 and we'll use this effect to add a prank kids place you'll activate prank kids place and then you'll get a kid that you're missing so in this case you'll get another water or like a roxy's technically you need another card to banish off this so i'll just do the i'll just get another water just for simplicity stake and um, we're then gonna you know use the Effect of do 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 do. We're gonna tribute for cost. We're gonna add back a pandemonium and a fancies back to our hand. Um, I'm sorry. I I, I don't like adding back fancies back. I usually like adding back lamsies, and here's why. So basically, fancies becomes a lot worse after you use it once because generally you don't want to foolish more prank it cards after you already got what after you already have access to your engine. So adding back fire and water or adding back fire and water is generally the best two to add back with do 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 um or like bow wow bark because they like they just burn your opponent or gain you life, so um, that effect is fine. You don't want to keep re when you resolve fancies too much in the mid game, you run out of your engine too quickly. So something to keep in mind. Anyways, if you guys notice, we haven't normal summoned yet, so we're gonna normal summon dropsies, link it off for meow. Use a uh, water effect and then summon the rocks. Use these two, and then we'll make a bow wow bark. And then we'll use the effect of, uh, of Roxy's. We can like banish Lamsies, for example. Um, draw us a random card. What is it? Oh, wow. Okay. We'll take that, I guess. We'll summon Fancies because it has the highest defense. And then, if you notice, we can then set this Pandemonium. 
a blank card in our hand, and then we have access to Babel Bark Tribute, add back water, and then add back... Oh, wait, sorry. We can't banish this, can we? Oh, yeah, we can't banish this because we need it for... Um, yeah, we'll just banish another random card because you need this for basically the the butler. Sorry. But you just... Basically, you would banish a random card off with the Roxies because you would have two, two random cards in your hand. And then, yeah. And then, basically, now you have... Activ activate this. You would add back, like, for example, the Fancies back to your hand uh, or the Roxies back to your hand, and then you still have access to butler um, even with the Toad Negate. So that's basically how you do, like, the two-kid... Uh, combo the um two kit poly combo only works with og though okay um the other thing is a lot of people might be wondering how do you play around nibru so if you open any two kids you play around nib but you lose to ghost spell um this play comes up sometimes um but i'll show you guys what i mean yeah you can also go into lamsies from the roxies yeah exactly um so if you open up any two kids um that's basically like access to battle butler without um, and then plays around nib. So I'll show you here. Yeah, you could just banish Lamsies there and just summon another Lamsies. Yeah. <clears throat> so like for example, I never normal summon the the Fansies like I explained. So I'll normal summon Dropsies, make this, and I'll summon another Fansies from my deck. Um, use both of these, <clears throat> and then we'll make a do 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 do. We're going to go chain link, uh, chain link 1, chain link 2. We make this chain link 2 because we care more about this resolving than this resolving. And so Fanzies will foolish a prank kid's place. And then we'll add the poly to our hand. And then we'll choose not to summon all Fanzies. Um, because we this is a forced summon. We don't want to summon one more time. We'll then use the effect of do 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 tribute for cost. Add back the pranks. I mean the place and the water back to our hand. We'll activate this. Search the missing color, which is going to be fire. Um, and then you have access to Pandemonium for Butler, even through like, even through like four summon. Um, the other thing is, uh, if you want to consider beating like trap decks with Torrential Tribute, a really cool technical play you can do. It's basically if you understand how rulings work, um, and understanding how cards miss timing, like with when effects. Um, let's say you activate. Pandemonium, and you use these two, and you fusion summon into a rocket ride. You can go chain link one rocket ride, chain link two fancies, chain link three dropsies, uh, for example, and then you would summon, let's say, like a, a missing color, like this, and like this, and then this is a thousand attack. What's interesting here is that, like, your opponent on resolution cannot torrential you. Do you know why? Well, essentially, because Chain Link 1 is Rocket, Light, Rocket Ride, the last thing this happened was not the summon of a monster. Therefore, like, you play around Torrential Tribute if you do something like this. Um, and basically, it makes it so that you can make a Link 2 and guarantee a search. Um, so that's something that I saw that I um, thought was really cool, too. Another cool interaction is, like, let's say you make, like, Weather Washer. You can do something like this as well. So let's say you activate... Um, pandemonium and you use these two you can go um, you can go chain link one drop chain link one dropsies chain link two fansies right so in chain link two fansies you'll foolish like a card like pranks and you'll summon like lamsies and then chain link one dropsies you'll gain a thousand life points but you'll choose not to summon because dropsies was chain link one and you chose to gain life points but not summon um, what the last thing that happened was you gaining a thousand life points, not a prank kid monster being summoned, which makes it so that your opponent also cannot torrential you on this board state. Um, that's something also is, um, important to keep in mind that because prank kid monsters are optional to summon from the deck and you choose not to summon them within chain link one, it makes torrential tribute miss timing. Um, so the reason why your opponent can't just go like, if you activate pandemonium and you make weather washer and you use two kids, the reason why your opponent can't just go like, you know, if you go chain link one kid, chain link two kid, and they go chain link three torrential, torrential will kill your weather washer, but you get to summon two kids anyway. So they have to wait until after the two kids resolve for to torrential you. I see a lot of play, uh, prank kid players lose to like torrential because they would just the guy would just torrential them after they summon off two kids, but you could choose not to summon. Um, just so that like you know you're probably wondering like well why does that matter? Well, because if you choose not to summon, you still can make do 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 do, and if they if they torrential tribute do 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 do, at least you still get the search off do 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 do. 
So that's something to like consider as well. Um, more often than not, you just play Weather Watcher Control, and when um, a Weather Watcher attacks, they can't respond. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is like a really cool ruling interaction with Weather Watcher that not a lot of people know. This is actually a, a this actually came up for me at the YCS, and I think it was one of the reasons why I was also really successful. But let's say you have something like this, and your opponent has your opponent has no monsters on the, your opponent has no monsters. You go to the battle phase. So at the start of battle phase, at the start of battle phase, um, your opponent gets to decide. You know, you get to you get to decide if you have any fast effects you want to use. Um, if you want, and then if you say no, your opponent then gets to decide if they want to use any fast effects. After that, we enter the battle step, and the battle step is basically when the turn player gets to declare attacks. What's really neat about cards like Weather Washer is that in the battle step, you get to declare an attack with a Pranked Monster. Well, Weather Washer reads, if, this, if your Pranked Monster attacks, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step. So now, if, you're, if you, at the start of battle step, at the start of, at the start of the battle phase, your opponent doesn't use anything and you don't use anything, and we move to the, the battle step, and you declare an attack with Roxies, your opponent can't respond, they take 1500. And then, after the attack resolves and your opponent takes damage, you go back to the battle step. What does that mean? It means that you can keep attacking with all your Pranked Monsters. After one, after one Pranked Monsters attack, every other Pranked Monsters on your field can keep attacking. Your opponent cannot do anything. They cannot respond at all. Because it keeps reverting back to the, the battle step. And at the battle step is, as turn player, you get the first action to attack with, a, with, attack with any monster before anything else happens. And this is why it's really, really important that when a Pranked player enters the battle phase with Weather Washer, you have to flip up every single card at the start of that uh, battle phase. Because if you don't and they enter the battle, the, the, uh, the battle step, they get to attack with every Pranked monster and they cannot respond at all. Which means all these kids will connect and OTK your opponent. Uh, which is a really, really, like, you know, it requires you to understand how, like, the battle phase works to a really high level. To basically like you know understand this, but this is like another showcase of like the complexities of this deck, and like using them to their fullest, right? Because this came up for me, where like I literally was like I went to battle phase. I'm like I asked my opponent anything at the anything at the start of uh anything at the start of a uh, battle phase, and they're like no. I'm like all right, you. Uh, I'm like yo, it's GG's attack. You can't respond. Uh, attack. You can't. You can't respond. Attack. You can't respond. Attack. You can't respond. GG's. Yeah, and, and that's literally what happened. Yeah, I, I caught so many people off guard by that. So many people off guard by that, um, which is why I think like, um, you know, like so I'm trying to give you guys as many tips as possible to understand, you know, this deck to like the highest level because, you know, like those small technical plays is, is what makes or breaks the difference between you topping or not topping and then either, you know, and then topping and or winning, right? So definitely, definitely keep this interaction with uh, uh, Weather Washer in mind. Um, all right, chat. Topping or dropping, bro? <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So, I covered that. Yo, who actually knew about that interaction with Weather Washer? That's a really, really OP interaction that not a lot of people know about. The Weather Washer interaction at, in Battle Phase. It's really, really OP. Really OP. Hey, damn, my chat knows. Yo, Pog, smart chat. <laughs> I would not expect anything less. I did like three years ago because I had to teach my little bro. I'm weak. Who needs access code? Lol. My mom. <laughs> I would say honestly, most of my losses at events are because I'm not confident um, in the fundamentals like that. Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. That's why I wanted to like help. You know. Um, a hundred percent, bro. Didn't know it. Thought you could activate after damage. Nope. Because it keeps reverting back to that start of uh, battle step. And as turn player, you get to declare an attack unless you decide to leave the battle step and en go to end phase. How do you feel about the double Link Spider Verde sequence after you get Nib? I mean, if I think like... I think like... Um, because Nib is not in the main deck, that card is really awkward. At least going first. But I think it's fine. Like, I don't think it's a bad idea. Like, I actually tested Thunder Dragon Fusion and Verte, especially game two and three, 
because I wanted to play around Ghost Spell and Twin Twister. If you guys don't know the combo, what you do is this. I I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be guys. Pretend Copium. This is Anaconda Verde. Make Verte, guys. This is Anaconda Verte. Okay. This is my proxy. I'll explain. I'll show you guys the combo that um I was actually trying to do to play around Ghost Spell and plays around Twin Twister. And any one kid plays around that. So I'll show you. Have you guys I'm calling that. Yo, good night. So you normal summon dropsies and you make meow. Get a thousand life points. Summon the um. Summon the fanzies. Use these two. You make do 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 blah 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 blah. Effect effect. Uh, we'll add pandemonium. So foolish this. Summon this. This effect will add you a pandemonium. And then from here, you're probably wondering like, yo, what do you do after this? Well, you actually use both of them to make a Anaconda Verte. And then use Verte effect to send Thunder Dragon Fusion, shuffling all these back. And then you hard make Butler on your turn. You hard make Butler on your turn. The reason why you do this is because your opponent can't twin you. And then they cannot um, they cannot bell you. Because they could easily bell your doo 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 doo. However, you'll realize there's a fundamental problem with doing this combo turn one. It makes your opponent's impermanence so much better, even though imperm is supposed to be a bad card against your deck. It also makes Valor into Anaconda Verte a lot better, even though it should be a dead card against his deck. So by playing around certain cards, you also ultimately lose to other cards that are more common in the metagame, and that's why I don't like it. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's bad, but I think it doesn't make sense with the hand traps that people are main decking right now. So, like, I'm not going to knock it. I think it makes sense. I think you can try it. But that that's the thing. Yeah, I think those are some of the tips I had for, like, basically playing this deck. Um, a lot of the skill in this deck really comes in, like, that mid-game. Um, you know, like, I think people can memorize... I, I mean, I've seen people, like, mess up the combo and all that good stuff all the time. But um, I think what's important is that, like, you know, this deck really shines in its ability in like the mid game. I think you can, anyone can minimize like combos and all that good stuff. But the cool thing about this deck is that there's actually a lot of plays and a lot of options that you have to like decide on and make like the right plays with, especially in that like really complex game state. Um, so definitely, definitely encourage you guys um, to definitely give this deck a shot. 